I'm going to try to avoid spoilers, but if anything comes up, I'm not going to hold back. You know what to do. Is the FNAF movie a horror movie? No. Did I enjoy it? Yeah. So yesterday I watched the FNAF movie and uh, I was going to watch it today, but my brother gets married today. So I can't really miss that. You know what I mean? So let's talk about the FNAF movie, the movie we've been waiting for. For, for years at this point. And I saw it. For the horror, again, it's not a horror movie. There's some aspects of creepiness in there. Uh, some of the deaths got me a little tingle, you know what I mean? Like, ooh, that, that, was, that, was, that was a little scary. <laughs> Specifically with a guy uh, in the closet. If I remember correctly, I think the sound effect of a big old chomp really sold it for me. Like, imagining that guy's skull being chomped by Bonnie, like, kind of gave me a little, little tingle, you know, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, scary. Freddy and the gang were all, like, really interesting. It was nice seeing them come to life. But again, not scary. I really felt like the PG-13 rating really held the film back from getting to its full potential which really sucks but it's like okay i get it like the largest demographic for the the movie would be like kids and preventing most of your fan base from watching this film it's kind of a, it's kind of kind of dumb not gonna lie but you know whatever at the same time it does ho hold the film back from its full potential which really sucks then the fact that the scary factor was lost once we saw the animatronics moving at least during the creepy bits right because in the game they were scary because we didn't see them move like at all and once we did see the move you're probably already dead that's what made them scary in the game but in the film it reminds me of a video I saw uh, about like how a Quiet Place like ruined its horror factor by showing the monster in broad daylight, which I, I do see this like being the same kind of thing in play here. At the very least, if they just kept their movements a bit more to a minimum, right? Like very stiff. The next scene, they're like over here now. Like you don't even, you don't see them move, or you know, like not showing all their movements on screen. Right? There's one part like where Chica's like walking behind a vent. You can't see her body, but you can see her head like moving across the frame. Like that was pretty cool. Like I I'm, I'm digging that. You know what I mean? But like other stuff where it's like reaching out. You know what I mean? Like it just like okay. Okay, well, it's not that it's scary because it's like a giant fluffy bunny just like reaching out to you. The story itself was fine. There's no like real problems there. I wish I could have done a little better at foreshadowing certain things. Spoiler. So when it's revealed that Shaggy is the murderer of the five kids, as well as Mike's younger brother, it kind of comes out of the blue. I really felt like it should have been something that is like discovered over the course of the film, but they just kind of reveal it like at the end, like, oh, he just was hiding with a different name. Ooh, like, okay, well, the only thing that really makes it work is when Mike first meets Shaggy in the office and Shaggy reads his uh, last name Schmidt, but like he pauses and he's like, huh. Huh. And then like he changes his like tone. Like that's like the one clue that we get to like knowing who this guy really is. You know what I mean? This film was more of an amalgamation of uh, different aspects of the franchise, right? We have uh, the FNAF 1 characters, the Springtrap, Vanessa, and even Balloon Boy for some reason. Like, okay. So everything felt kind of like loosely connected. It felt like more of like a celebration of FNAF rather than like a co cohesive and tight, you know, story, right? Upon writing that line, I realized that FNAF has never been a cohesive and tight story. So I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's a plus side. The characters were all great. The actors were all great. They did their best with the script that was given to them, which the script isn't bad, but it could have been better. Like the biggest flaw, I guess, of, like in the entire film would be like Mike and Vanessa having like a five minute conversation. And I just kind of clocked out like halfway through. I was like, okay, th this is like getting really no Nowhere. like what's going on here and like vanessa had like a dream moment like she just throws my sleeping pills like in the river for some reason like bro said that's what the mask is that's what the point of the mask is there was also an aunt character with like her own side plot she doesn't really add much to the story other than like being a nuisance honestly if her character was a bit more like kind and caring and just like said hey you know mike you know you're living your life but this kid is not suitable for you i want to take abby for myself and you can like do your own thing that would have been fine but she was just more like you are terrible you are scum of the earth you should when it comes to Easter eggs, there's quite a lot of Easter eggs, unsurprisingly, right? So I'm just gonna like run through them real quick. I know uh, Sparky is confirmed like a, a thing in this universe. Like if you're an old time FNAF viewer, you would know about Sparky the dog. And that is a deep cut from like way back when, right? Like in the FNAF one days, there was an image floating around of a sixth character in the FNAF game called Sparky the dog. And uh, I'll pull it up right now if you guys don't know what that is. And in this film, like we see Sparky the dog, like a decommissioned animatronic, like with a suit and all that stuff, just like laying there in the back room. He has like the dog collar bone thing which you know what other animals gonna wear that kind of thing right also matt pat was there frick yeah my guy he got his like own scene and own lines and all that stuff he even said the famous line it's just a theory which is that was fun that was that was a need also i didn't catch it my friend caught it but his name tag like because he was like a server in like a restaurant his name tag said ness which is really really neat also the rainbow dude from fnaf world i think was there like one of the first things that you've seen in the film also i didn't catch this but mike had a book called dream theory and another character in the film like some side character criticizes him for like believing in, in this dream theory which apparently is a reference to an old map hat theory about everything being a dream and then finally the first song of the end credit scene was the FNAF 1 Living Tombstone song. 
that's pretty hype. Though I did not stay any longer than the first song played in the credits, so I don't know what else plays after that. Overall, 7.5 out of 10, it wasn't bad. It's not a bad film. Just don't think about how we waited over half a decade for this film. Okay, bye.